Hi, this is Nancy with On Point TV and Quilting with Nancy, and we will call this Take Two. We are so sorry we had started the live and my phone just decided to totally lose power for no reason whatsoever. So now we're using Athena's phone. It should look pretty much the same, but I am gonna pretend as if we didn't even start that last one and let's jump right into it. I'm gonna talk to you today about paper piecing. Now, you know, I've done lots of different things with paper piecing, but what's cool is that there are a couple of honestly new tools kind of thing that I think can make paper piecing a little bit easier. I'm gonna to try to show you the way I normally do it and these with these new tools, and then you can decide whether or not you wanna give those a try. Just a heads up, the new tools would be, oops, my little packet is empty in here. These new little, this is a precision piecing products from a company called Acorn. I think that they're located in Michigan. I believe that the product itself is made in Canada. And I purchased it up at Renee's House of Quilting up near the Traverse City area. If you ever get the chance, so here is a Michigan thing. Here is Michigan. Grand Rapids is here. And Traverse City is up there by your pinky. There's a couple of reasons why you might want to go to Traverse City. One, it's gorgeous up there. Two, if you like wineries, they've got them like by the dozens. And it's also near Lake Michigan. And everybody that's ever seen Lake Michigan will tell you it's the prettiest body of water they've ever seen. So when you're up there, stop and visit Renee at Renee's House of Quilting. Or you can give Renee a call or check out her website. She doesn't have a lot of product on her website, but it would be a way for you to get a hold of her so she can tell you about this acorn product I'm going to talk to you about. So Renee's House of Quilting. Also, we're gonna use this pattern. So this is one from So Emma. You can purchase this pattern on firesidequilts.com. That's owned by my friend, Laura, who's right here in Grand Rapids. But maybe we both wanna to move to Traverse City, you never know. So anyway, this block is what they call the economy block. Not sure why they call it that. I always look at it and call it a square and a square, but when you're, I guess that when you're adding more going around and around, you can call it an economy block. Either way, this is the product we're gonna use. This comes with 42 sheets in each pack. And this is what the sheets look like, where it's paper piecing, it's all printed out for you, and this is gonna be a six inch block. You might notice some of you that this is the same designer that I did the log, the pineapple log cabin about a couple months ago, we did that. Those are also available on Fireside Quilts. So this is what I made with the product so far. So these are the cutest little pirates. I love this fabric line. The center square was just the right size to be able to fussy cut for those little pirate ships to go in. This fabric is all available on Fireside Quilt. So she's got every one of these fabrics there so you can make one of these two. And I think I only used a quarter of a yard and I do have one more row to go on this. All right. Then what we're gonna work on today, same pattern, is going to be in some more scrappy colors. So these are some leftover scraps, honestly, from a quilt that my sister Renee and I made for my brother John and his new wife. At some point, I'll be showing you that quilt when I'm doing the quilting on it. Um, I expect to get that done for him by Christmas. So I know all of you guys know what that's like. You get the quilt top, you show him the quilt top, and then at Christmas, you might give him the quilt, but maybe it won't have the binding on yet. And you'll say, yeah, I'll get you to you with the binding for your birthday, which, okay, that's just the way things work. But this is what we're gonna work on today. I love this all over scrappy. What I love is the idea of the light, the dark, the light. And then I switched it up and did the dark, the light, the dark. So when I get this quilt done, there will be no sashing. I'm gonna want these all to be just like this, touching each other. It's gonna be really fabulous. Um, and I probably will put this on point. So you know what? I should get this done to the point where I'm ready to put it on point, which means on the diagonal. And then I'll do another live video and we'll show you how that's going. So I wanna show you a couple new tools also. So this is something else I got from Fireside Quilts. Laura picked it out for me because it was in pink and I kinda happened to be a pink girl. And inside here, 
I can fit a lot of tools. So it's got my 45 millimeter. It's got my 28 millimeter, which is the one that I'm going to use. Keep in mind, this is not a rotary cutter that's available anymore. They don't make the ergonomic in the 28. They only make it in the 45 and the larger. Also, I have my add a quarter ruler here. And then this little guy, this, some of you have seen these before. This is a seam ripper that is actually made for taking out stitches if you're doing serging. So with serging, it's got the stitches that go around the outside edge, so a lot more threads. This is very nice for that. I know there are people that also use this for removing the seams if, when they're just doing their quilting. Not me. It's too sharp, and every time I try it, it seems like I'm going to cut a fabric, so I wouldn't use it for that. But I'll show you what I did like this for when I'm doing the paper piecing, because I'm going to be doing a little bit of chain piecing. Another thing, oh, I'll talk to you about this later. I'll put this over here. Okay, so I've got everything set up. I've taken, and I'm going to work on four of these for now, and we're going to do chain piecing. I've got some partially started here also. So I've got four pieces. I've got my fabric stacked up here with the dark and light and what I need, and then I have my glue stick. I love putting this down. So instead of pinnings, now I normally have my pins. You see my wrist pin cushion. This is a kit that you can buy on our website, onpoint-tv. But for this, I'm going to do the whole thing with no pins. So the first thing we're going to do is going to take that pattern, and I have four of them stacked up together, and I'm going to fold it on the diagonal so that I know the placement of my center square because I'm going to put the fabric on the back. So now I'm going to find my fabric square and then use my glue stick. Now my glue stick is what's going to help hold it in place. So I just, and it doesn't have to be the big, huge blue glue stick like this, but just do a little circle. Then when you're placing the square down, you can use the diagonals to know that you're placing it centered. Otherwise, you have to be picking it up and looking through the sky, and I don't think you guys can tell where you can see the shading going through. But instead, if you'll just do that little pleating on there, then it helps you know where the placement is. So now I'll do another one. It's a little circle around. Oops, got to get these squares. You actually could see it. You could see it? Okay, yep. good. With the dark. That was like the old-fashioned way where you had to pick it up and go to the light to see if your placement was right. We're not going to do any of that today. We're going to do this. Honestly, I found this to be pretty speedy. When I'm doing the, using this new acorn tool, at first I was thinking that it was really going to be a little bit too slow because it seemed tedious. But once I had the product in place, then it really went very fast and I was able to chain piece it without a problem. So this is the product. So this is Acorn Precision Piecing Products and they call this the Seam Align Glue. Seam Align Glue. And it is non-toxic and is going to wash out, so that's not going to be a problem. I do love how this cap is right there, and so I'm not going to lose it. Now, that's a novel idea for me, not losing the cap to glue. And it makes a tiny little drop. So let me get my fabrics here in a row. Uh, I need my dark. What did I do with that? There it is. No, I think that is. Okay, we'll do this one on here. Okay, we're, we're kind of sort of good to go. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put three drops of this glue on the top and on the bottom. Now these are just tiny little glue and you use so little. So this is, all right, it's coming all down. I did that entire pirate block and I'm done. I put three more of those blocks and all of those blocks that I've already done of the blue and I'm only gone this far. So it's gonna last a little bit, okay? Now I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put this with the raw edge right onto the square and it's also nice that the Soema people have give, cut everything so this works really nicely with the acorn. Just going to set that there. Then I'm going to grab my next one right on top of it. Now in the instructions for the acorn precise piecing, they do tell you to then press it. Yeah, I just wasn't in the mood. So I didn't. And it worked great. So I don't think you need to press it. If you want to, it certainly wouldn't help. 
right? And I'm just eyeing these to she be sent. It would help. It would help. Did I say it wouldn't help? Yes. I didn't mean that. I meant it will help. <laughs> okay. Okay, let's do, no, nope, I'm not going to do that one because I can't find my other dark triangle. So we'll do this one with the light. Now, when I did this for the other blue ones, I did a whole bunch at once. So I was stacking at least 10 all together. And what was nice about that is it gave this time to dry. Right. So we're just going to place that there while I'm giving that time to dry. I'm going to show you how I sewed these, but we're going to skip right over to these ones. These are where I've already got the first two on. This time again, just going to put the dots, dot, 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 dot. You can sing a song while you're doing it, whatever it takes to keep you entertained. Oops, I better scooch that one over. Okay, let me grab this one. And this acorn, the precise piecing, this has, there's two parts to the system. So the glue is the one part. And like I said, in they've got some videos out there. I've not seen them, but when I was up at Renee's House of Quilting, she was telling me about them, that they can take you through step by step how to do this. All right, I'm going to leave those. We're just going to do these two for now, right? because the other ones should be dry enough for us to proceed. So we're ready to start sewing these. So I am going to cap my glue. Isn't that a nice idea? Scooch uh, the table out of the way, and Athena's going to come on in. All right. So I have set my machine up with 100% cotton thread. I'm using the Superior uh, Masterpiece thread in this particular time. I'm on my performance icon, my FAF icon, and I've set my um, stitch length to be a little bit shorter. So instead of 2.5, I've set my stitch length to be 2.0. And I have set it up so that the needle does not stay down. And I'll, I'll show you what I mean with that later. And I've set it up with my open toe applique foot. I want to see those lines that I'm sewing on. So with the open toe applique foot, I will have no problem seeing that. My paper piecing sections are right here. With this being glued down, okay, show it up a little bit, okay? This is glued down. I don't have to pin this in place. So my pin cushion is being useless to me right now. I'm just gonna flip it over. I'm gonna go into position and start sewing. When I get to the end of that interior line, one more stitch, oops, my machine is stopping with the needle up. I'm gonna lift the presser foot getting my next piece, flipping it over, just push that one out of the way and start sewing it. Again. So you can chain piece these pretty quickly. So like I said, it seemed like, you know, well, maybe that gluing was taking a little bit long in the process, but it's so nice not to have to be worrying about going over pins. And I do go over pins all the time. I'm not gonna pretend that all of a sudden I'm not going to start keep doing that. But I do get a lot of comments from people going, hey, you're not supposed to sew over those pins. And I'm like, yeah, it'll be just fine. All right, when I get to the end of however many I'm chain piecing, I think I did five here, I'm gonna lift it up. And this is when we're gonna use the Havel Seam Ripper. It is sharp. You do not want to play around with this. It's a sharp little guy, and it does have this cute little cap on there, right? And I know that Laura at um, Fireside can get these. She does not have them now. She does not know that I was going to pull this out of my toolbox, okay? So what I like it for is these chains that are here, just taking and cutting that thread off, and then I reach under and grab that one. Then come here. Cut those two tails off and grab that one. So it really cuts really, really nice for this kind of chain piecing. And I got to tell you, I've never done this before. If you've ever taken a class with me, I have never used this little Havel cutter before. And I think I like it I for some things. And then these extra ones, of course, I've got to take those off too because it would just drive me batty. But I'm going to leave them on for now. As we flip it over, and I'm going to continue sewing on, nope, let's get that one out of the way. 
I'm going to continue sewing on the one that I've already got going two around. So these are the ones that I pinned later. So I'm going to do two seams on here and then we'll go to our next set. Lift the presser foot, next guy flips down. I'm not having to worry about the placement because these little guys are glued down really pretty securely with just those three dots of fabric. Whoops, thread cutter. Might as well use it because I have it, right? There. And then cut those off and this little guy. All right, now we're going to back up and go back to our table, okay? All righty. Bring the table forward. Okay, here we are. So I am going to continue to get these threads off. So I have the thread from my thread cutter and these little guys. All right, so I want to tell, show you what I would normally do at this point with the paper piecing project. With the, What would happen next is I'll take my rotary cutter and my ruler and my, I'm sorry, my mat and my add a core ruler. And the next step is normally to take and trim these seams down to a quarter of an inch. And on most paper piecing, this is a most important step. So I'm gonna show you what it is, where you fold it. Oops, I've got another thread. Excuse me for being obsessed with little loose threads. Okay. Take and fold it back using your add a quarter ruler Set it so it's right next to the folded fabric, and then trim. All right? That's what we would do. And then for placement for our next section right here, we would take and fold it back. I'm not, oops, wait a minute. I got to do one step before that. Okay. So I'll trim this last one so it looks alike. But I'm telling you, this is normal paper piecing. On the next one, I'm not going to do any of this. And I'm going to show you why another reason why I'm kind of loving this um, So Emma stuff. Okay, so these two little guys are placed. The next step is to press them open. That brings us to another tool from Acorn. So this is a chisel tip pen with the Acorn liquid inside. What is the Acorn liquid? It's this. It's the Easy Press Fabric Treatment. Okay, it's spray sizing, you guys. That's what it is. Um, they've put it in this little bottle, and it's really nice. It's as good as any other spray sizing I've ever used. But for this little kit, this one that I showed you here, it comes with a little bottle with a nice nozzle on it, the little glue, and this chisel tip. What's the chisel tip for? You take your piece of paper, fabric, hold it over, and just run the chisel tip. Oh, I got a little fuzzy on there. Okay, just run the chisel tip across that seam and it is deposited just a little bit of spray sizing right there and look, it stay folded. Now, normally I would get my little clover mini iron out here and I would do this with the clover mini iron, which works really well, but with now, I don't need to have my clover mini iron right here. Just this little guy here. And it's it's pretty full and I've done all those blocks already. So these are the ones that I'm not going to trim and I'm gonna do the same thing. Now, what I like about the way that So Emma seems to have designed it, I don't know what kind of super math she used, but I don't have to trim these. They're all a little bigger but the, tr the next triangles are just the right size, so everything seems to fit. So if I look here, I don't know if you can see through again, but the dark fabric is a quarter of an inch away from that line. So it means that I don't have to do the next step. The next step is folding on the lines, folding the paper back, using your add a quarter ruler, trimming that off, and then you know where to place your next piece. Well, with these patterns, you don't have to do that. I am not gonna do that on this, and I'm gonna place my next pieces right here. So I'm gonna get my glue out again. And this time I'm gonna do five dots because it's a longer seam, it kind of makes sense. I like to do it at the top and the bottom, and then that gives it time to um, dry. And this one is really kind of off whack here. So when I place this one, 
see how the seam is kind of up higher, which means I didn't center this one quite right. I'm going to keep it down here low with this first seam. And I know that I still have a quarter of an inch available. So I'm going to place that. And then I'm going to place my next one on top. Hold that glue down. Then my next one is going to be these. And actually, I'm going to show you. You know what? I'm going to show you how to cut these first. So this is a directional fabric. When you are cutting a directional fabric and you want to cut it into triangles, you need to do it in a special way so that all of your pieces, your little figurines, your little design are actually going the right way. If I just take these and cut them both on the same diagonal, I will end up with this unicorn being upside down in the block. This is also how I do this if I'm doing uh, corner triangles on a on point setting. When I do the stripes, so you might wanna refer back to the Great Basics. The Great Basics was um, the last full video series that we did, it's not been that long ago. And watch how I do the setting triangles and corner triangles. Because in that quilt, I use a stripe. And if you don't cut the corner triangles right, you will end up with stripes going in all sorts of different directions. So for this, I've got this little unicorn. The trick is to not cut the two squares together, but instead to cut one square in that direction and then one square in this direction. So then when you put it on the block, one, two, three, four, everything is going in the direction that you want it to go. So now I'm going to take those and I'm going to glue them down onto this block. So I'm going to do, this is my top. So I'm going to do these two. So this one and this one here first. So again, five drops of glue on the top and on the bottom. This is my bottom half square triangle that I just cut. So using directional fabrics is so cool. It will really seriously bump up the end product that you have. It just really looks fabulous. All right, so I'm only gonna do two now because we're starting to run over time a little bit. So I've got these two. We're gonna go to my sewing machine. Okay, bring this over here. All right, these guys have been plenty glued down, which will give these guys a little bit more time. So this is my triangles. You can kind of see, I'm not sure if you can see. Can you? Yeah, you can see those little glue dots right there. Flip it over. They're not moving. When I'm doing the outside edges on paper piecing, that means I can start and stop off the paper. So I'm gonna set my machine up now so it will stop with the needle in the down position. Now watch this. When you come to the end of this one, just keep your needle and your paper right there. Get your next piece. And now instead of sewing on this seam, because I've got the papers stacked up, instead sew on the opposite seam and look at how the papers are kind of aligning. So really making it very easy to align that up. There's a lot of different things that I do that on. I'm working on a series now with that's called um, the eight block sampler. I'm gonna cut this part. That I do that quite a bit when I'm doing half square triangles and flying geese. And I'll talk, we'll talk more about that later on. So this is the seam that I just sewed. Now bring the next one over. Whoops, gotta flip them over. This is the next one I'm gonna sew. Just line them right up at the same angle. Pencil away. So that's the second large triangle for this one. I'm gonna reach to the back. I normally would do at least 10 blocks at a time. I rarely would do just two. This one, the glue wasn't quite dry, kind of fell off. Okay, there, all right, he's stuck back on. Oops, gotta go this way. And same angle again. And continue. All right, let's cut that off and I'll meet you back at the table. 
these other things I want to talk to you about. Then again, you can use your little Havel cutter. Cut that little guy off between there. And this is so dangerously sharp. I want to put my cap on. Beep. Okay. And then we're back here again. We can use the little chisel tip applicator. Just hold your triangle in place. Run this chisel chip. Tip. Well, that was hard to say. Run the chisel tip right on the seam, and it just deposits a little bit of that spray sizing or whatever that magic. I. It's not fair for me to call it spray sizing because it's calling it, and I should call it by what it is. Easy press fabric treatment. So you can deposit the easy press fabric treatment right on the seam. And then just like with the other ones, I would then take my glue dots. I'd go bada boom, bada boom, bada boom, bada boom. Place those right there. And then I would complete that block in the same way. All right. So I'm not going to do that for you just because that would kind of be repeating. Do know that after you get that done, then just like with all paper piecing, I'm going to want to give it a fabric treatment afterwards before I actually cut it out. So I took my Acorn Precise Piecing Fabric Treatment and I put it in my Mr. Bottle because you already have a Mr. Bottle. You've got something at home that'll spray. So it doesn't come in a spray bottle. It comes in the um, just the like container like that. I just put it in my Mr. Bottle. I think these are also available at Fireside Quilts. So there you have it. Some cute little techniques, some new little um, tools to use. Let me cut, shut this glue. I'm going to get this little guy done maybe next week. We'll put this little guy on point, okay? Some other things that I got up at Renee's, something you might want to look for, are any of the AccuQuilt dies. I do not have an AccuQuilt machine. I have a Big Shot machine, and I use the AccuQuilt dies in my Big Shot machine. But if you're ever looking for any of the AccuQuilt dies, Renee's House of Quilting, actually, she's a full dealer with all of those. So she's got all of these dies. You're going to see me using this when I'm working on one of my Lone Star quilts that I did in the Lone Star series. So if you ever want to do a Lone Star, we got a whole series on that too. But there's one of them that has these purple setting squares and triangles. And I have been wanting to figure out what applique design I want to put in those. This is what it's going to be. So that's going to be fun. Speaking of Lone Star, I just have a new book. So when I taught the Lone Star video, I taught you how to make the charts for figuring out how much fabric you need. Well, now I have put them all in a book form. So this is not on the website at this very minute. So it is a September, is it September 10th? September 10th, 2020. I don't have them on the website yet. I got to call Gina. They literally, Athena and I opened the box when she got here. So they are here here now so i'll get a gina to put them on but it's going to give you the instructions not the instructions the charting for doing lone stars either in three by three up to ten by ten which is king size so i'm really really excited about this and on the back Teresa actually put a picture of my kitties and that was so sweet of her to do that when she did the editing there, that was a rush of a day. Start doing a video and stop a video and start a video. And now we finished the video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you liked it. If you did, give us a thumbs up. Um, please follow us, subscribe to our channel. We have a Facebook group where you can show, um, kind of share any quilts that you're working on. We have a Facebook group just for this, but also Nancy's Show and Share. So you can go there and love to see any quilts that you're making. Please, please, please like us on Facebook, share the projects you're working on. If you have any questions, contact me at G or quilting with Nancy at gmail.com. Have a great night.